Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And once again, we're here at uh, KSC getting ready to do a speed run to Wide Awake International. Done this a uh, few times, so I'm going to go ahead and unpause and get things going here. We'll be uh, taking off at sometimes 60 seconds. I'll probably play most of this replay at uh, 2x, but here at the beginning, uh, we'll go ahead and just let it play out at 1x. Maybe I can explain a few things. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to hold back any spoilers here and just kind of state here at the front that this is a record run for me. It was basically, uh, the interesting thing was when I, when I flew the flight, I got wheel stop at like 19 minutes and 55 seconds or something like that. But I noticed when I watched the replay, it actually doesn't get wheel stop until like 20 minutes and one second. So I'm not quite sure why that happens, but I've seen that before. And I'm just going to go based on the... Rotate. I'm going to go based on what I can see in the replay because that's the only thing that I have to uh, to show repeatedly since I didn't record the live flight. Uh, something else I'll today, uh, say is that this run was done using kind of what I'll call the, uh, the, the original classic formula. Uh, there's a variation of this flight that uh, Dimitri has shown and that Agent Gonzo has shown that gets you there uh, two or three minutes faster and that will be my next project I'll tackle that but before I moved on from this flight I wanted to at least at least beat 20 minutes or come really close to it um, depending on what depending on how I feel I may actually try this one more time just so that I can get wheel stop in the replay under 20 minutes because it kind of bothers me that the wheel stop doesn't show up in the replay until just after 20 minutes but going forward uh, probably I'm going to move away from this original original classic and start trying the uh, the other method that uh, gets you there a little bit faster uh, so let's go ahead and bring up the time acceleration and go through this mostly at 2x because I've got a bunch of these replays up now so so everything's pretty standard here uh, just trying to get up to altitude ahead of the the heat you know st stay ahead of the temperature and here I kinda thought this was gonna be the end of my flight <laughs> I was getting really close to airframe overheating right there and let's take a look at the external camera for a bit now that we're kind of past the danger zone on the temperature thing. I'll bring up some external MFDs. This way we can keep an eye on the uh, surface MFD and everything as this flight's progressing. And again, this is playing at 2x, so it won't take uh, the full 20 minutes. And once we get up to Super Cruise, I'll go all the way out to 3 or even 4x. Uh, something else to kind of mention is there's a difference between uh, the, the time that you have from throttle up to wheel stop and the time that you have from wheels up to wheel stop. It seems that everybody is kind of recording the time from wheels up to wheel stop and that's just a few seconds shorter uh, than if you, if you count it from throttle up. I kind of almost think you should count it from throttle up to wheel stop, but uh, the mission elapsed timer in the XR2 doesn't start counting until wheels up. And here I'm just basically doing my uh, rolls just to keep myself, keep my vertical speed under control. I've also found that I can get up to about 73 kilometers. Uh, in my previous runs I was kind of holding closer to 70 kilometers or trying to keep it under 71 but I'm finding that I can get up to about 73 and I still have uh, good control I still have good control over the vessel I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about skipping out into space and I think that helps uh, just a, just a little bit probably doesn't make a huge difference but getting up a little bit higher you know reduces the dynamic pressure a little bit so you're not decelerating quite as fast so just just little subtle things here and there and when you get really down to, um, actually let me go down to 1x for a moment here as we come up to Miko. 
It's gonna be right after 12,000. I'm just curious because I, I haven't actually looked to see what my exact speed was at Miko yet, so I'm gonna go down to 1x when I get up to about 11.9. Just so I can see it. Okay, we'll go with that. And we have Miko at 12. 0, 19. That was the highest number that I saw. Okay, so now we're at Super Cruise. Let's go out to 3x. Not a lot going on here, obviously. Just uh, pitching the vessel up and down very subtly to maintain altitude. Kind of jump inside the cockpit here for a moment. System reset. And I forgot to record my new uh, glide slope. But anytime I anytime I improve. I try to rec uh, remember to save it at the end so I have a new reference, but I forgot to record it this time. I, actually, I forgot to save it at the end of the flight, so I don't have the reference for this flight. Just pitching up and down again, holding there at about uh, 73 kilometers, maybe even a little higher. I think I get up to 73.5. Now, just again, dynamic pressure is a little bit lower. In previous flights, it was 4 point something. This one it's 3.6, so we're you know, and I still have control, so I should be having slightly less uh, deceleration here since I'm up a bit higher. Go ahead and jump back outside, bring the MFDs back up. And something else I've noticed on this flight is when I get ready to do actually, I sh when I when I turn off the main engines, I've noticed that the vessel oh, wants to uh, kind of pitch. And here we go, the braking maneuver. Go ahead and let this play out at 3x as well. I somehow lost focus and let my vertical speed come down a lot lower than I really wanted it to be. But it really wasn't too much of a problem. I just went to a full retrograde sooner than I usually do. But I, did, I didn't mean to let my vertical speed get so low that time. That was just a... I wasn't looking at it or something. I don't know what was going on at the time. Slowing down. And let me jump inside for a moment. Keeping an eye on Aero Brake MFD at this point, watching it very closely. Obviously that's the indicator, although I end up running completely out of fuel, it doesn't show it in the playback. And this is interesting too, because the last time I watched the playback it said the KG was 0 0.8, this time it says it's 1.6. So this playback recorder isn't, isn't completely accurate. There's, there's, several, there's several things that make, it, that make it not show things correctly. In fact, now that I think about it, uh, the mission elapsed timer might be wrong this time because of the fact, uh, for the fact that I'm playing some of this playback at 3x. Um, the mission elapsed timer, it, it doesn't, uh, it's not completely accurate unless you play the, unless you play the whole replay at 1x. But we can, we can go based on the sim time. I put in a little bit more uh, angle of attack this time instead of 45. I immediately went to about 47.5. And I found that uh, having arrow break end right on top of the island actually works out better. I kind of thought that if you overshot the island a little bit, you could break harder later. And that's what Agent Gonzo kind of writes in that uh, famous flight that he did, that you can break harder later. But um, I, I find that it actually works better, for me at least, if I have it end right on top of the island or even, you know, just like right there in the center. I don't want to go, if it goes over even a little bit, it's really hard not to overshoot. And here I'm banking a little bit. I'm noticing Mark in uh, the other glide slope that I have up, which you don't see here, but it basically it's this one. I'm noticing that uh, my angle to the island is a bit off, so I'm just doing a bit of banking to try to get it closer Mark to 0, 0. 0.0. Again, if it's a little bit on the positive side, I'm okay with that, but I don't want it to be too much on the positive. Now we're coming down through the uh, hot spot here, obviously. And we've got the island out there, and we're still at 5,200 meters a second. 
running. I completely ran out of RCS and main fuel on this one, so again, the replay just doesn't, uh, it's not 100% accurate, it doesn't show that. According to the replay, I've got 1.6 kg of main fuel and 13.8 kg of RCS, and I, I, I remember from the flight, because I just flew it, you know, a half hour ago, I was completely out of fuel on both. So we're 17 minutes 32 seconds, and we're looking pretty good here. Got the island right down there below us. Information: APU running. And I've been coming out of uh, autopilot a little bit faster or a little bit sooner than usual. I used to go all the way down to 700 meters a second. Now I'm coming out of the autopilot when I'm at about a thousand, maybe even a little more than that. Mach 3, hitch, on. off. Now I'm just trying to pitch over and make sure that the, uh, I want to come down obviously in front, I don't want to go past and have to come around and come back, so I'm just trying to pitch way over and just bleed off some of this altitude because I'm still 19 kilometers. But uh, let's jump back inside for a moment. Time is 18 minutes 33 seconds. I think this is fairly accurate. But again, when I watched the replay at 1x, it didn't show wheel stop until 20 minutes and one second. But again, when I when I flew the flight, it was like 19 minutes and 55 seconds. So it's kind of annoying that, that there's a discrepancy. Subsonic. Throwing out the air brake to slow things down a bit. Jump back outside briefly. Five thousand. Try to find a better camera angle. That's better. Four thousand. Three thousand. Two thousand. And back inside, so we can see the mission elapsed timer. One thousand. 800, 700, I had about had a heart attack when I did that. I hit the wrong button on my joystick and shut off the APU. Wheels down, and now we're applying brakes. And we should get wheel stop at 2001. Wheel stop. Eh, call it 2001 or 2002, your pick, either way. But in, at least it, in this replay, it actually did uh, have the wheel stop at the same time that I saw when I watched it at 1x. But again, when I flew the flight, if I had been recording live, it would have been more like 1955. But nevertheless, I think it's actually better to take the, the higher time uh, you know, whatever you see in the replay. And then another way to figure it out is to take the sem time at wheel stop and then subtract the uh, 60 seconds that I sat there on the runway at KSC. And then that'll give you, um, that'll give you a, a different time entirely because that's going to be from throttle up until wheel stop. So I'm going to, I'm going to record this as 20 minutes and two seconds. And, uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.